I was like a poster child, you know, for not making it in life. I was a gangster. A gangster just is, is, is blood hungry, not just money hungry, but at all costs, you know, bloodshed, it doesn't matter. Anyone that I would try to cling to, to try to hold on to, it was weird because they ended up getting killed or something, you know. What I ended up doing is just not trusting anyone anymore. So I trusted in guns pretty much. Uh, guns started being my best friends. And I got caught, and I was going down a bad, bad direction in my life. I was on the verge of just losing it. I had a Thompson machine gun, uh, which is stuff you see in museums. So I ended up doing an 18 month uh, sentence uh, for machine gun possession. Right before I got out, my sister called me on the phone crying, saying my mom had cancer. Anytime I ever heard about cancer, somebody's dying, you know? And I just wanted to go off on somebody. In the midst of this, you know, this Apache Indian, this celly of mine, he says, hey man, why don't you write, write a poem or something, man, with all that anger you had? Because I was waiting for, the, for, for, for them to open up the gate for, for recreation, and I was gonna shank this one guy that really ticked me off to begin with. I wrote down on the, how I felt on the pen, and it was kind of murderous, but, but it kind of felt good because I let it out. Well, when I got out, they invited me to this church here, and uh, I went in there, and, and these guys are all clapping and stuff, and you know, all excited, hey, we love you, and stuff like that. And I'm so foreign to that, you know, I'm like, man, how do you love me? I didn't clap or get excited or any of that stuff, but it was just a, a safe place for me to go to. You know, I just felt like I couldn't think and the demons were off me, man. I just looked up kind of the God and I said, God, I said, man, if, if these tears of joy I see them having and them all excited and the, saying that they love me, and if that stuff is real, man, I, I want some of that stuff. Well, then I just started coming to church more and on my own without no one having to invite me. And, and I told God, God, you know, I'm real. I, don't, I ain't fake. I ain't never like no fake people or none of that stuff. So if you real, God, you need to show me, man. You know what I'm saying? This, this is your time to shine, you know what I mean? He just, he just showed me all the highlights of my life when the gun should have went off. This happened, that happened, I should have been dead. And it was weird because tears just started coming down my eyes, man. They couldn't stop, it was like a fountain, man. And I felt the pressure just come off my back. <laughs> and even just for a second, I seen a ray of hope, man. And, and it felt good. And, and I had peace for, for once in my life. And, and I loved it. There was a, a moment, man, where I had some numbers, you know, that I would hold on to just in case this Christian thing didn't work out. One day I was struggling so bad, didn't have no money. The wife was pregnant, man. And uh, I cried out to God with all my heart finally. And I just cried out to him. And just as I did that, I burned those, those numbers. And, and I said, Lord, from this day forward, I'm totally dependent on you, Lord. 